Hey guys, so we have a surprise announcement on Twitter here, um, sort of like a two-week countdown to the Legends Festival, so uh, we know it officially begins on the 23rd slash 24th of this month, uh, which is a little bit earlier than we usually have it, because I remember last year it started on the 26th, which was Black Friday last year, so looks like they're trying to push this up a little bit further. Um, it is possible it starts this early on the 23rd, but then we don't end up getting like the first hype banner until the 26th, which... Um, I think is actually what happened with UI Goku, if I'm not mistaken. But um, well, let's go ahead and see what they talk about here. Um, they mentioned three main topics. So it's Toshi here, obviously, uh, and they mentioned three things. So the first one is the leader slot. So they go into um, uh, a little bit of extra detail here, sort of clarifying additionally what the leader slot is intended to do and w how it functions. Um, and they give a little bit of a graphic here as well. Looks like this is going to be uh, there's going to be like a little designated leader spot on the team for the leader here. Um, and the way that the leader slot works is it's only going to apply the Z ability of the leader unit if they are brought into battle, which we uh, got more clarification on in the previous dev letter from the Legends team. So it's not anything new. Uh, we already knew that, but I just want to clarify that that's that's what that means. So for instance. I made a video back in the day talking about how, like, um, what was it, like, like green Captain Guinea was going to be, like, a really good leader. That was before they clarified that the leader slot unit had to be brought into the match uh, rather than just being designated as a bench unit for the team. So you're not going to be bringing green Ginyu into the battle, so <laughs> he's not going to be a good leader, right? Uh, the, leader, the unit that you bring into battle as the leader slot is going to be what's going to be applying. So the Z ability of this Vegeta, for example, would be applying to a character like this blue Majin Buu. Whereas generally, it would not apply because the leader, the leader ability for this, or the Z ability from this guy is Saiyans and movies, right? And obviously this Buu is not on either of those tags. And then the same goes for the vice versa of that as well, right? Vegeta, as a battle member, will be getting the benefits of the Z abilities from each of these characters. So again, this blue EX Boo will be giving his Z ability buff to this Vegeta if he's a battle member, even though it normally would not be the case because he's a leader, he's a leader, leader unit in the leader slot here. So that's how they're um, that's how they're building this sort of leader slot ability here. Uh, he said one of the main focuses behind the decision to implement this uh, mechanic was because they want the uh, the Saga teams uh, to be more viable, which I definitely understand because. They really started this off with like the free Gokus, right? During the anniversary, those six free Gokus from the Saiyan Saga, the Cell Saga, Frieza Saga, Battle of God Saga, Resurrection F Saga, um, and all that. So um, I think that could be interesting. We'll see how they actually go ahead and do this when it comes out. But that's the, sort of the first thing they discussed in this update video. Number two. Yeah, this is sort of explaining how this works, right? Uh, number two is going to be the boost system. Now, they didn't really go into a lot of detail about the boost system here, but it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. So the new feature is the boost characters, a feature to strengthen new and underused characters' power in PvP. So the buff we're planning could include Z-Tier gives, I don't know, you know, 50% to st strike attack or something like that. 50% to, I hope I hope they don't do this, but like 50% to health. Like, can you imagine that? Fifty percent to help, um, but it looks like it's going to be tiered off in terms of you know which units are getting the bigger boosts. So, for example, a character that's not really that represented in PvP right now, I don't know. Let's just pick a random character. Um, I, I don't know, like uh, the purple free-to-play Broly or something, right? The purple free-to-play legendary Super Saiyan Broly unit is not a character you run into all that often in PvP. So a character like that could end up being in Z tier because I think the way it's going to work is it's going to be buffing characters more the less they're used, right? So if a character's used percentage, and remember, they publish the results of each season's usage percentages pretty much every time a season ends, right? Um, and based off of that, they have the data and they have the ability to see which characters are used more than others. So I assume for the characters that are being used the, the least in the entire game, they're going to be getting the largest benefit of the Z tier buff, whereas characters that are, you know, not seeing that much play, but more than the Z tier characters are going to be getting the S tier buffs and so on and so forth. 
And then characters like Zenkai Red Gohan, who's in every single match, are not going to be getting a buff at all. So hopefully this goes, uh, you know, to a, to, I mean, more, a powerful enough buff to a degree where it sort of offsets those ridiculous characters like Yellow Gohan, Red Gohan, and Purple Gohan, basically every single Gohan in the game, right? <laughs> uh, to make the other teams more balanced and able to compete in the top tiers of PvP, whereas right now it's not balanced at all, so... That's what I'm hoping for this. Again, the biggest thing that I could see coming out of this as a positive is that there's just more team diversity. That's what I personally, as a player of this game, want to see. I don't want to queue into PvP and get the same Zenkai Saiyan team every time. I don't want to queue into PvP and get the same hybrid Saiyan team every time. I want to see things like Powerful Opponent. I want to see things like Saiyan Saga, like the Frieza Saga team. Um, you know, even um, like Lineage of Evil, I see like once every... 70 matches. It's, it's, it's pretty insane how th there's teams in this game that have gotten consistent buffs since the start of the game, but they just, they're just never never used. So hopefully this will boost that, you know, the girls team, stuff like that. So uh, that's my hope for how the boost uh, system will actually uh, interact and, and influence the game's meta in the future. So that's number two of three. The final thing he talks about here is something that we have never heard of before, and it's new information. So He's bringing this up here. It is the new equipment reroll system. So the way that he explains this is currently the way the system works is that you know you upgrade an equipment or you reroll an equipment, and uh, you could be rerolling an equipment for as long as you want. That equipment has a chance of starting or sorry ending at a lower percentage or a lower value than it started at because it's completely random, right? If an equipment has 15% to strike attack right now, and you reroll that equipment, it could go down below 15%, right? There's no guarantee it's going to increase. So the way that they're going to mitigate this is there's going to be a new feature, equipment secure upgrade and equipment guaranteed upgrade. Now these are two different systems, right? I mean, I assume what's going to happen is you're going to upgrade on equipment and it's going to ask you, do you want to do secure upgrade or do you want to do guaranteed upgrade? So the secure upgrade just ensures that the value on the equipment that you're upgrading will not go down. So if you have a 15% strike attack roll um, on an equipment, and you choose the secure upgrade uh, feature, I assume what what's going to happen is it's going to roll a random value. It could be lower, it could be higher, but then it will ask you, would you like to keep this new value or would you like to go back to the old value? So if you if you roll 15% and you reroll the equipment and it rerolls to a 13%, it will probably say, would you like to keep the 13% or would you like to just keep the original 15% roll that you had originally? Um, and then vice versa as well, right? You have you have 15% and you, you roll the equipment and it goes to 18%. It's going to ask you again, do you want to keep 15% or do you want to go up to 18? Obviously, you want to go up to 18 in that scenario. But um, the secure upgrade feature, I assume, is just there to make sure that you always have a fallback option in case you reroll an equipment and it ends up going down, which is never good. So sort of like a safe rerolling option. Um, and then the second one, this is the one that really interests me here, is the guaranteed upgrade equipment option. This one, the value will have a 100% chance to go up. So again, you have a equipment that has a 15% strike attack roll on it. If you reroll the equipment and you choose the guaranteed upgrade system, it will for sure <laughs> give you a higher roll than 15%. Now, they mentioned that the uh, materials or the uh, you know necessary stuff that you need to do these things is going to vary, so I assume uh, you know, the amount of crystals or erasers that you need for the secure upgrade is going to be higher than just a normal reroll. And then the same thing goes for your guaranteed upgrade. I assume, by the way, I would not look at this and, you know, uh, be like, oh my god, I'm going to reroll every equipment to a Z+. Plus. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, keep your expectations low. Because for all we know, this guaranteed upgrade could cost 50 erasers for one roll. Right? I mean, it's, it's completely possible. I, I have no idea how much this is going to cost. So keep your expectations low. So that when this comes out and it costs, you know, 70 erasers to re get a guaranteed upgrade on your equipment, you're not like super upset in that. that. That's just my advice to you. I don't know what the cost is going to be, but uh, this is the, the guaranteed upgrade is surely going to be, I would assume, pretty expensive. So, uh, yeah, just keep that in mind as, as this releases. But that's pretty much all they went over here um, in terms of the new stuff. Um, the reveal stuff for Legends, by the way, is uh, going to be on, I guess, the 23rd. And then the actual... Uh, let me just see something here. Because this is the tweet that they made for the reveal stuff, I believe, initially. 
So this is when the reveal and stuff's going to be. Okay, so yeah, so the, yeah, exactly. This is the reveal and stuff date, the 23rd. And then the actual festival begins on the 23rd as well, I guess. Or no, I guess this is technically the... Uh, yeah, okay, so this is when the reveal and stuff is going to be, actually. This this uh, date and time down here. And then I think they said that the actual festival will begin the next day on the 24th, which makes sense. So uh, the reveal and stuff is going to be November 23rd at 4 a.m. UTC. So, you know, whatever time zone you're in, just go and convert that to whatever you're in. And that's when the reveal and stuff will be. I'll obviously be covering that live and I'll have all the information there for you guys. So uh, that's pretty much it for what they announced here. And just to quickly go over some of the thoughts that I have on the leader slot, just because I had a lot of people ask me this. I have, I picked out just um, six characters that, uh, oh, sorry, not, not six, five characters that I think are actually going to be probably some of the better leaders in the game for this, for, you know, what, what this leader slot system seems like it's going to be. Number one is this guy. Um, I, this completely depends on how dominant hybrid Saiyans are, at, even after the leader slot system, even after the boost system. Um, by the way, they did mention the leader slot system is going to come out before um, before the uh, Legends Festival begins, which I think is good because the last thing we want to happen is the last thing we want to happen is you know they release some super hype unit, and at the same time they release the leader slot system, and there's it's just too much stuff, right? We've already been in this position before. <laughs> where they released the Red Star system and the Zenkais and everything was different. The new battle system, that was like the biggest, like, I don't want to say shit show ever, but that's what it was um, when that update came out. Because like literally the entire game was different and nobody knew what was happening. So um, I'm glad that they're deciding to release the leader slot system earlier than the Legends Festival so that people have a chance to at least test it out and see how it works. Um, but again, assuming that hybrids is still as good as it is, I think this Gokua is just going to be insane as a leader leader uh, unit. Honestly, he might be the best leader unit in the game. Um, he giving HP um, and strike attack, <laughs> HP and strike attack to the whole team, right? Because remember, this entire Z ability should apply to everyone on the team. Twenty percent to health and twenty two percent to strike attack. I don't think there's a better leader than this guy um honestly i'm gonna i'm gonna be completely honest with you here this is probably the best leader in the game you're looking at here so which is actually good because having an anti hybrid like a super super anti-hybrid unit as a unit you could just throw onto any team and have them be like a leader on, on the team like that's good in my opinion because that is going to force people to play other teams so i like that Yajirobe is a good one. Um, the thing about Yajirobe is he does hold a green card. So him as a leader, by the way, he also gives HP. So, uh, and I guess base critical as well, which is not that important, but could be cool in the God. <laughs> Super Saiyan team. I don't know, it seems weird. Super Saiyan team with Yajirobe. Um, but a 20% uh, HP Z ability on top of him holding a green card is going to be pretty pretty important. On top of the fact that he's also just a good card. Right? He's, he's a good unit. So he, he'll be a good leader here. Um, I think, um, let me just talk about this guy first. Uh, depending on how they go with uh, a lot of the anti-revival units they've been pushing out lately, like we've seen LF Cell, like his anti-revival mechanic is very, very powerful. Uh, and then we are going to talk about Gogeta in a second, but this Gohan, I mean, is there anything that needs to be said here? Like this, this is a, you can just throw this guy onto any team pretty much. He has a revival, he hits ridiculously hard. His uh, Z ability is pretty good, it's just, you know, strike attack and defense. So just all around a very powerful unit. He has support. He can heal. He, he does pretty much every role in the game. So he's a very, very powerful unit. Uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, um, I think after his Platinum Equipment, or Unique Equipment, whatever you want to call it, has, has released, me personally, I feel like he's a must-run. On every single team that he's on, I would even say, like, let, let's just take a look at his teams here. Saiyan, Fusion, or I guess Fusion Warrior is what the team would be, right? Um, and then I guess it would just be GT. So he'd be, yeah, Saiyan, GT, Fusion Warrior. He's a must run on every team. He's a must run on the Saiyan team. That's insane. <laughs> like, how good is that? Um, he changes the whole landscape of the game because of his anti-revival mechanic on the equipment in combination with how he already does that in his uh, unique ability. I don't, um, I don't see a world where that ever sort of like goes away. The only thing I could see is they release a, a unit that has a better <laughs> anti-revival mechanic because let's be honest, we're not going to stop getting revival characters. So this guy's always going to be insanely powerful. Getting like a basically a second rush for free is almost too good. Um, 
And the amount of damage this guy does with the equipment, plus his defense, plus, you know, it, 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 this guy is ridiculous. Like, this guy is w literally one of the best units in the game now. Um, and his anti-revival, like, even if he didn't have the anti-revival mechanic at all, he would still be one of the best units in the game. <laughs> so, yeah, he's really good. I think him as a leader in the team could help to neuter a lot of the uh, revival characters, especially if one of the characters we get for, you know, Black Friday or New Year's is a revival character. Guess who's coming in and shutting them down? This Gogeta. And then finally, I put this guy here. Um, he's definitely going to be a good unit. The only thing with this with this character is that he has this, which is not going to be affected by the leader slot, right? He's not always going to have a Lineage of Evil or Freeze of Force unit on the team besides himself, so he's not always going to be able to get the benefits of this part here. Um, but I feel like the fact that he holds a blue card on top of his green being so powerful and it being a universal support character, I feel like he's definitely worthy of uh, being a solid uh, leader slot unit. I think when you compare this guy to like the other four units I talked about here, he's definitely not going to be as good as them. But it's you know it's worth considering this freeze if you have Zenkai uh, as a leader. He'll, he'll, he'll be pretty good. Plus he gives I, be, I believe it's both offenses. Yeah, to uh, um, pretty much the whole team if he's a leader. So those are the five units I would consider to be probably the best leaders in the game. I mean this guy's probably a, a wild card. I mean just you know <laughs> me personally, I'm probably going to try him out on a few teams. Uh, it seems like you know holding a blue card is a pretty powerful effect. Uh, I think. You know, Yajirobe on something like LOE could be pretty funny because of the fact that the LOE team already has this guy who holds a blue card. Then you could throw Yajirobe as a leader who holds a green card. So you can have a team, an LOE team, that holds a green and another blue card. That's going to be fun to use. So there's a lot of fun combinations you can really think up with this leader slot system. So I'm, I'm tempted to go ahead and uh, just start thinking about some of those right now. But... Um, let me know down below what you guys think about everything that we discussed here. The leader slot system, the boost system, and now also this new guaranteed equipment upgrade system. Again, I would definitely temper expectations for this. For all we know, it could cost 100 erasers <laughs> to roll one slot. Think about how much they've been pushing erasers recently in this game. They released those sales on the weekend, 50 erasers per day on the weekend. You can get erasers through a lot of the shops in the game now. They're dropping from the raids. You can get erasers from the doing the Ultra Space Time Rush every other, every other week, right? I mean, there's a lot. They're basically shoving Eraser down your throat at this point in the game. So they uh, are probably doing that in, in anticipation of this being, you know, a, a massive, massive resource sink. So that's pretty much all we have here. Um, I'm excited to see uh, how this update uh, plays out in terms of all three things that we discussed here. And I will see you guys all in the next video.